Sawyer, and you're listening to our house, A to Z. No, not quite. Not Probably. quite like that. No. You could never be too loud in my ears. I doubt that. I love having you up in my monitor, babe. Mm-hmm. It's just that you go from like zero to 150. That is true. Between like a cor- verse and a chorus. <laughs> I only do, do what the father tells me to. Uh, there is no power in hell. But that, that happened. It's like you go from like low to high. I love it. There was a time like eight years ago that we were singing that song and my wonderful, wonderful, kind, supportive cousin recorded just like a little part of it and it was me just like screaming, you have no rival! You have no rival! (laughs) (laughs) So it was many, many weeks of him walking around and just playing that every time he walked by and just to other people. Just me screaming, you have no rival. Babe, so. that, that's because everybody thinks it's you're special. awesome. That's because really, everybody really thinks really you're special. awesome. So it's all good. Now I think of it every time I sing that song. I love that. I think it's amazing. And you're just a really anointed worship leader. So you can oh you can scream things like that into a microphone <laughs> and listen back later and be oh, like, that's yeah. weird. But like, just know at the same time that like <laughs> demonic principalities were like, you know, being taken that's out of the that's knees what I have to hold on to. as you're singing it. Yeah, that's what we all have to hold on to. It's powerful. It's good stuff. Um, now here's it. something. We're back with our, our house, friends and fam. After another week off. <laughs> After another week off. But let's describe the week off. Weekend. Yes, it was retreat hey. weekend. So much going on. It was really fun. But lots even for work for you. You didn't get out of it. Zach had to lug sound equipment and set up stuff. and But it was great. And it was a really great, great week. And we had 225 ladies. Oh, my gosh. It's so cool. It was crazy, but it was awesome. We had snow. We had yep. a house full of the stomach bug before we left. <laughs> like, of course we did. It was women's retreat. I know. Of it course we did. It was four kids in a row, like dominoes. Yep. One after the other. All right. Um, so that was fun. Right. I was ready to leave. That's, that's all I have to say. That's one way to say it. Yeah. I was ready to go. Well, I'm glad we all made it out of that alive. Me too. And a bunch of, a couple hundred women were <laughs> super blessed. So I love hey, that. Hey, here's some really exciting things. If you haven't been around the church or if you don't even go here, but you want to check out other podcasts, somehow we're finally catching up with the times. It's, I guess it's not that we're catching up with the times because we used to have an HPC podcast like eight years ago. Right. Seven or eight years ago. Yep. And it kind of just became too much to keep up with because it was right. kind of like volunteer time and editing and all that kind of stuff. So well, we kind of let it go. And, and just, we didn't have a Dave LeBeau on staff. We didn't have a Dave LeBeau on staff. And we relied a lot just on the fact that people could access things via Facebook Live. Correct. Because everything went to Facebook Live and YouTube. So um, we relied on that. But I am happy to say that our HPC Sunday morning messages are are now back on podcast, um, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all the great places you can get your podcasts. And it's called HPC Sermon Notes right. and The Breakdown. So those are both on the same channel. The Breakdown is a Wednesday night live recording of Pastor Kurt and Luke Rock, and they get together and literally break down the Sunday morning sermon. Right. Um, so that's a half hour long. They yep. do it from 6.30 to 7. You can catch it live on YouTube and Facebook, or you can just jump on that podcast podcast, HPC Sermon Notes, and The Breakdown any other time. So that's pretty cool. And then there was another new podcast. We're getting ready to release um, a new podcast with Pastor Holly Hart and Roger. They're doing bedtime stories. So um, that's going to be a really fun release for your kids to have and something you can put on at bedtime, Yay. possibly, and it's Bible stories. Um, but it's going to be great. We're really, really, really excited for the launch of that. And we, hit, we, ex- we, <laughs> we announced one more launch this past week, too. Do you want to share? Or are you too busy trying to fix all no, the sounds to make I, me sound pretty in this microphone? I'm super excited. Well, we're getting phone calls, too, mm-hmm. on our watches and phones and everything else we have going on. So that's part but of the problem. Are we not? That's true. I should take this off. Uh, no. So we announced on Sunday morning that um, opening this fall 2022 is uh, King's Academy. Hey. And King's Academy is HPC's long-awaited, 10 years ago envisioned, um, super spiritually empowered school. Uh, thank you, super Holy Spirit. Super spiritually empowered. Yeah, I like that. Uh, the, a school for the spiritually inclined. No, you know what? Yeah, we shared this announcement on Sunday, and it was back in the winter of 2012, 2013, and the Lord gave us a vision for a school. And so I'm just, I'm ecstatic because I love seeing things come to pass. I love seeing what God puts on our hearts uh, come into fruition. And so 
Uh, just super, super excited. There's going to be, you know, any information that anybody needs can be found on the website. The school has its own website, which is Kings Academy N E. Yeah, like uh, New England. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dot com. Com. Yeah. So you can find that online. You yeah. can register online. And you can't um, register online at this point. You cannot, but you will be able to, yes. I think, at some point. So it, it literally just opened up on Sunday. So I think there's just a lot of really cool stuff happening. Enrollment's open. And I would just like to say that we have just been overwhelmed by not just the interest from students, but also in faculty and folks who have a heart to be a part of what God's doing here. Mm -hmm. So right now we're over 80 for enrollment after just opening on Sunday, and then an additional like 50 people who have said, hey, however we can serve on the teaching end, the faculty end, the staff end, the administrative end, let us know. So that to me is just a really cool confirmation that this isn't just a vision that God gives one or two or three or four or five or six people. It's something that is really sewn into the hearts of so many people who are are worshiping with us and so we just thank you guys out there who have been praying not even knowing that something was coming but just praying and believing that god had something waiting in the wings so. right i mean it's been years of people saying when is hpc opening a school when is hpc going to open a school and it was a really hard thing for a lot of those years to say we don't know like, right. I, I don't know we don't know honestly right. there was a lot of years where i was like never like, yeah i never want to do that <laughs> and it really just had to be like a god thing and like the right timing and all of that but i guess that time is now so fall 2022 yeah, that's it that's it so that's k through 12 and we're still figuring out if we can get a preschool going by then too so a lot of crazy stuff. So many crazy things. Yeah, but I love it. So anyway, that was a big announcement. And speaking of crazy things, yeah, let's and hear to it. transition into our topic today, marriage is crazy. No, marriage is crazy. No, <laughs> no, no. Marriage. Marriage. Your marriage might marriage. be, but my my. <laughs> love. Love. True love. True. Um, your marriage is not that's actually probably true your marriage is actually less crazy than mine yeah because i'm more of like a mellow don't like any change everything stay the same person so okay but what's changed <laughs> what's that stayed the same is an easier question to ask oh man i can answer that nothing wait 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 this is a really good thing to to insert here can we talk about when your parents ran that marriage thing back at South Attleboro a hundred years ago and they took a poll to ask where what every, how everybody graded their marriage on a scale of one to 10? Yes. And like 80% of the men in the room, maybe more than 80%, almost all the yes, men in the room yes. graded their marriage at like a seven or above. Yes. I think that's awesome. I think so too. And I think it's worth doing some psychology here because simultaneously the women in the room who, by the way, were married to the men in the room, right? <laughs> you had to be married to be in the class. All the women in the room, almost all, graded their marriage at a three or, or under. Now, so what is that? What the heck is that? So somehow it is possible to be in the same marriage and have two different marriages. That's why I said, I said right. my marriage is crazy, cra I know. yours is not. <laughs> well, because I know that sounds so funny to say, but you're like, wait a minute, everybody is viewing their marriage radically differently. Yeah. I'm so. like, I'm married to a crazy radical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> said, I never know what to expect. Yeah. It's something different every day. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? <laughs> <laughs> and then for you, you're like, and I'm married. To the most stable person I know. <laughs> I'm just glad you used the word stable. I like stable. I didn't say emotionally stable. I just mean exactly like stable. <laughs> just kidding. Oh my gosh. Uh, I do. I do though. I think that that's worth noting, and I think it's really important to be like you know because we've counseled couples, we've sat across the couch from, and it's like, how are we even in the same marriage? Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, because you know. God wires us so differently. Right. And so what we're seeing is good. Like a husband can come home to dinner every night on the table and, you know, see his laundry done and hanging in his closet. And like, this is the best. See his family and church together every Sunday and see his kids growing up like well and just check all the boxes mm -hmm. and be like, man, like I'm living the dream. Yeah. And then on the other end is a wife who's just like, I am the loneliest person in the whole world. Yeah. I'm absolutely I miserable. And, I am. Yeah. And I'm not doing anything I ever thought I was going to when I grew up. Growing right. Up, grew up. And yeah. Wait. Instead, I'm just like folding laundry and cooking. And now it's probably a good time for a come to Jesus moment okay. with you because I don't think you're doing anything that you expected you were going to be doing 
So, just so you know, I just let the ladies at retreat know this because I feel like did you? it was so long ago where I kind of like, I don't want to say <laughs> gave my testimony, but gave a little bit of my history. <laughs> and Did you give your life verse too? I don't have one. Only oh. you have one. How do you feel now? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. So yeah, this is not what you expected. No, not at all. I mean, but is this what you expected? No. No. It's way better. Exactly. <laughs> you That's have right. to say that. It's way better. Okay, so what It's did... way better than law school. It's way better than living in... Well, law school, you would have been done with law school a long oh, time ago. That's true. Right? So yeah. you would be an attorney living in a, like historical, beautiful, oh. giant home in Boston. Oh, don't talk about it. Yeah, that's Just where kidding. you would be. <laughs> Not Boston. I always liked D.C. I did like the D.C. area. And I liked government and politics and stuff for a long time. Mm. Now I'm so glad I didn't go that. Now I'm really glad I didn't go that route. Well, I don't know. Maybe you could have changed things, you know? Oh my gosh. Maybe you'd be running for president right now and I'd be I voting for you. I was joking with the ladies at retreat about how I used to have one of those mannequin heads because <laughs> I always liked cosmetology too. And I was like... One day I'm going to go to, I was going to go to the Paul Mitchell school. I'm like, oh yes, it's going to be great. I'll do that. It's like so easy. I'll do like a year and a half of doing that. And I used to have this head that you could cut the hair on and, and style it and stuff. It's, it's really embarrassing. And then I said, I got a real live head when we got married. When we started dating, I had a real live head to work on. That's right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. But my hair keeps growing. So you can just keep practicing. Mm -hmm. But well, I just like to say, Paul Mitchell or not, I get compliments on my hair all the time. Hey. So all of those have to go back to my stylist. Oh my Thank gosh. you. I know. I mean, it just only took me a couple. It only took me a couple YouTube videos. And I was like, I can do this. There you go. This is great. At a girl. <laughs> Same thing with law school. I mean, you watch a couple of YouTubes. I mean, you can handle yourself in court. YouTubes. I just watch Law and Order. There you go. That's Same it. thing. Is that like watching ER and then thinking you can do brain surgery? Probably. <laughs> it probably is. Well, all of those things, I think, add up to some, yeah, some very different uh, feelings towards marriage. Yeah, and, you know, a couple, maybe a whole year and a half ago or so, we did um, a marriage podcast on communication in particular. Yeah. So you can always go back and check that out. But I was thinking about the importance of greater than communicating is just honesty in marriage. And I think a lot of times we are just so afraid to actually say how we feel about things. And we become like isolated and that little bit of frustration grows into bitterness against a spouse. Mm. And before you know it, the spouse is like, what the heck is happening? My spouse is completely miserable and wants to leave me. And I had no idea that they even had a problem. Or there's just like this big blow up because it's been a whole bunch of little things that has yeah. compounded. I'll tell you something interesting, and I, I would love to hear your take on this, is you know how sometimes couples they don't start off unequally yoked. Hmm. Um, you know, they'll start off maybe, let's say both of them are unsaved. Uh, and then somewhere along the way, maybe early on, somebody accepts the Lord, somebody goes to a service with a friend or a family member, and or they go through a crisis and one person deals with the crisis with addiction and the other one gets saved and, and comes to the Lord. Whatever it is, follow that road down 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years and you're dealing with uh, very radically different perspectives of a marriage, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to what does what does a good marriage come down to? I know we've done podcasts on being unequally yoked mm -hmm. and things like that, and there there are other ways to be unequally yoked. I mean, sometimes both parties will be saved and then and love the Lord and walk with the Lord, and something happens, mm -hmm. or maybe it's a slow fade for yeah. one spouse. And they, they end up tracking in a different direction and the other one ends up getting stronger with the Lord. Right. And so now that fork is getting wider and wider. Do you have anything? I don't, I don't even know how many people this even applies to out there who's listening, but I, I think we all probably have that couple in our lives somewhere. I think that being married to somebody that either undergoes like a, a big change, like you said, a trauma happens to one spouse or there's an accident or a loss of a parent sometimes or a loss of a child. Sure. And you're literally dealing with somebody who's completely different than the person you married, whether that is salvation, whether that's a loss of salvation, whether all these different things. Or you're completely different. Or you're completely different. And how do you even like, you don't even know how to function anymore right. or how to... right. Like you're processing completely different. You're seeing your whole life completely different. Yeah. And as a spouse, like how do you handle how do you handle things like that? 
Yeah. Well, how do you give stuff enough space to even allow that like process yeah. to happen? Or when do you step in and say this person re- like you really need to get some help or yeah. counseling or? Well, you know, and and so we're doing all these um, all this soul work as a church, right? So there's all these different books being read and and groups being attended, and you know, and my soul studies coming out mm-hmm. um, in a couple of weeks. So all of this research and all this stuff, if it makes us aware of anything, it's this that like when we grow closer to the Lord, there should never be the consequence of getting closer to Jesus that pulls us further from our marriage. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think that that can be really a, a common misconception mm-hmm. that like, well, I'm just keep getting closer to God. And yeah. so, and because my wife isn't, I'm just kind of leaving her in the dust. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not really Jesus at all. In fact, somehow Jesus stayed incredibly intimate with the Father, but never lost sight of his bride. Yeah. And and even to this day still makes intercession for us. Right. And so I think that that intercession is key. Like, how are you making intercession? Because your proximity to the Father, the very next priority you have in getting close to God is keeping your marriage before the throne right? instead of leaving it in the ditch while you continue on your journey of faith. Yeah, I mean... We talk to we talk to a lot of I'm gonna say unequally yoked. I feel like obviously it is it's such an old school thing it's such to an say. Old, I know, <laughs> but it um, still rings. Yeah, true. a lot of couples who are in different places in their faith, and that can be really challenging. It's very it's extremely isolating, and like you said, there's I talk to a lot of women, and it's usually. I'm growing so much closer to the Lord. I feel like I only have peace when I'm at church or when I'm with like other Christian friends and in my house is chaos or yeah. my husband is like stressing me out. I feel like just like I can't be close to the Lord when he's around. Yeah. And it like breaks my heart because I feel like how can that how can that be except that it's determined by our flesh. Yeah. Because really the closer you get to the Lord, the more the Holy Spirit is like activated and and moving and you're more sensitive to what the Holy Spirit's doing. And I feel like what should happen is that we should have more grace for their brokenness. We should yeah. have more patience for the time that they're taking or how hard it is. But but why doesn't that happen? Why Why are we still so like I don't want to say driven by our flesh, but still like I can I can only imagine what that situation is to feel like and just the one person you are supposed to be in the most unity with. Mm-hmm. I, you I, feel like you there's less and less unity as you pursue a different direction. I think it's just a lot it's a lot of self. I think we're still so subconsciously incredibly selfish to to the point and I don't even mean selfish in a malicious way, like playground selfishness. I mean like positive selfishness mm-hmm. like like where you get saved and your faith is so exclusively your own that you run to it you hide in it and it becomes like almost like a mistress to your marriage it it becomes this thing where you escape an unhealthy marriage in your faith and rather than bring an unhealthy marriage under the covering of your faith rather than it becoming a place to hide your marriage in it becomes a place for you to hide from your mm-hmm. marriage in and I think that that can be dangerous because now you're you're actually having the opposite effect on your spouse, where they're seeing the, your faith, your walk with the Lord, your attend your church attendance or ministry involvement or or whatever it is. They're they're beginning to see that as competition or as something that's pulling you away from them, rather than something that is making you know making your marriage better. And I think that that can be really hard. Yeah, I I agree with that. I just don't. I don't know if that's necessarily always the heart behind it. I think that it becomes a place where you can really be who you are and be yourself and talk about the Lord and mm-hmm. the, the deepest parts of yourself without being judged by somebody who unfortunately is supposed to be the person that's closest to you. Yeah. And I think the other part of that is is goes back a little bit to the selfishness that you were talking about. And it's a little bit of our expectations. And I think we want in our minds, our marriage to look like something. Right. We have, no matter what, we have an idea in our head of what marriage should be. And is there probably a perfect scriptural definition of what marriage is and what it looks like and when it operates in its most perfect? Yeah. Yeah, of course there is. And is that going to always be reflected on earth? No, it's what we hope for. But does it mean 
always that are it's going to look like that for the most part it's not going to mm. it's not going to be perfect 99.99 percent chance that it's not going to be perfect but should it be graded at a three or below but should it be graded at a three or below well i think if i just if i had the chance to talk to people living in that situation i think it would just be like is there any like what's redeemable like, like what is redeemable in your yeah. marriage? Like what are like tell me some great things about your spouse. Mm-hmm. And like let's try as hard as we can to really focus on those things. Yeah. I mean, I think about even like scriptures where it talks about like a whole household being saved because a one of the par- one of the parents, one of the spouses <laughs> think gets saved. I think it talks yeah. about the wife being yeah. saved. And like how powerful that is. And do you think it's because they isolate themselves and because they just talk about all the things they hate about their husband? Right. I, I, I doubt it. Right. I doubt that's what the story is there, but. No, it's because that people see the joy that's on you and they see exactly. the peace that's on you and they see like the grace that you walk in. And after a while, and that's the idea when you live with somebody after a while, they start to see that that is a more excellent way. That's a better way. That is the way, Mm -hmm. you know, and over time, the world proves itself wrong and our faith proves itself right, you know? Right. And who who better, who else has a front row seat to that than the people in your household? Right. So that's why it's so important that we're not walking according to the flesh. But I think in truth, I think what it comes down to, unequally yoked or not, I think like satisfaction in marriage, it, it might not be as good as the guy who's rating it at a seven or above, and it might not be as bad as the one Mm. who's rating it at a three or below. And I think the more, I know this sounds terrible, but I feel like you and I have had conversations before where like you've been frustrated at like how positive I've been about something. Like you're kind of like, that's not realistic. I would never say that to you. Or even, no, well, you didn't say that. That's just what you meant. I just knew what you meant. But like, um, okay, like you when you're out for the night and you come back. Sorry, wait, wait, wait. I feel like on the if podcast, you go out, you're always bringing up like I'm out all the time. You're out all the time. <laughs> never. I mean, I'm you always out. go out with the girls. It's just that they're so memorable to you because they're so far and few between. That's not true. So, but so I'll leave. I'll leave for. I have prayer on Tuesdays. Sometimes I have board meetings on Wednesdays, and those are really finance the, the two. Sometimes there's a finance meeting, elders but, meetings. So occasionally an elders meeting, but usually it's just Tuesday night prayer. That's the one night of the week that I'm like consistently always gone. And, um, and so if the kids are like stressful or if the kids are tough or whatever, like, you know, it's, uh, we talk about it, but you'll go out for the night or whatever with the girls and you'll come back or from a meeting and then you'll say, how were the kids? And I'll be like, oh, they were awesome. They were great. And it's like, it's like, sometimes you're like, like, I just wish they would turn the house upside down for you just one time. Um, but I, I I feel like to say like, we don't know how I could do it without you. Like, I mean, I honestly, like. It was so hard. I was like, "When is Ashley getting home?" Because I just need help with these kids. I'm I'm, lear- I'm learning that that's yeah, that's what I or should I'd like be a saying. Response, like, it's just not it's true. Because you've done such a great job raising them <laughs> that they're awesome. That's the kind of response we, I'm looking we, for. We have the same four kids, and they really they really relatively are the same behaved for both of us. But I think it's just like you're you're so much more aware of what needs improving. And I'm like so much more aware of like what's great already. And so we're, we're, it's the same situation, but I feel like if I was a little bit more aware of what needed improving, it would probably help you out a lot. In fact, you probably wouldn't feel as frustrated. You probably wouldn't rate something in the bottom three. Exactly. Not that you would anyway, but I'm just saying as a wife out there uh-huh. listening, you might not rate something in the bottom three if the husbands out there who are listening would would become a little more realistic about like you know, the la la land that we live in. Yeah. I mean, I do definitely think a lot of it is personality. I think that I think about like the nights that I'm home on Tuesday nights and Zach leaves for prayer. And in my head, it's like, okay, game time. Got to get homework done. Uh Um, I'm going to make sure at least two of the kids shower. I'm going to make sure the back room is cleaned up because there's always like the kids Mm -hmm. kind of like make a big mess. I'm going to make sure I get the dishwasher loaded and all the big pans washed. I'm going to make sure I get a chance to exercise tonight and probably I should rewrite the uh, staff agenda. And I'm going to, so I always have all these things. Yeah. And then when I go out, (laughs) you're usually already sitting on the couch, almost asleep. And I literally think you sleep for the first like hour and a half that I'm gone at anything. (laughs) That's not true. (laughs) Zach. That's definitely not true. And then you wake up and you're like, 
everybody upstairs and brush your teeth. <laughs> now that's pretty much how I envision it. And so then when I get home, you're like, uh, it was awesome. It was a great night. <laughs> I got so much done. I, so much I slept. And I then... mean, I probably do put the kids to bed, to bed on an average of like 30 minutes before you do. Um, only because I get more stressed out by trying to get them out of the house in the morning. And so mm-hmm. there's a little bit of that there. But no, I, I just think that in general, not just in regards to this, um, I'm going to plead the fifth on what happens when you're <laughs> out of the house. But we get all the homework done and we mm-hmm. study the spelling words and the Bible verses and all that stuff. I just think that it's, I think that we see through different eyes mm-hmm. and um and one of the keys there is no single key everybody says oh it's communication or oh it's this or oh it's that i think one of the keys is not just keeping each other's love tank full which we've talked about that in the mm-hmm. five love languages and you know making sure that Did we're we speaking those on that? i don't know but i know we've referenced it a mm-hmm. lot but keeping each other's love tank full but then the other end is like understanding the why of why is my wife frustrated? Not just she is and roll my eyes. Oh, she's right. just mad again. Oh, she's just why nagging again. Why is that so tired? Yeah, why am I so tired all the time? <laughs> because I stay up too late watching TV or because I am up building beehives in the dining room yes. until God knows when. I think at the end of all of these these things is it's again being able to understand the shoes that the person, the other person walks mm-hmm. in and understand like their wiring. So you're saying exercise a little bit of empathy. Yeah, yeah, why not? So it's tough. I think it's important. I mean, I think if you don't ever practice empathy, you are end up being a very selfish person. <laughs> well, but, but and sometimes it's like even you can try and you just don't understand how you're wired. I know we've talked a little bit about Enneagrams on here mm. too. And I know there's mixed reviews on Enneagrams, you know, and how effective they are or how, you know, sort of like self-deprecating they are because you paint yourself into a box and then you think you have to live there or whatever but if we could just think of it as a tool Mm -hmm. like people who've studied personality types and who have written things about it if it's nothing more than that i think one thing that it may help you understand about your spouse is oh this is how they view the world Mm -hmm. or this is how they think or god gave me this person to help see an angle that i'm not seeing and and understanding and i've talked to husbands about this i don't know how many husbands i've talked to about this but uh, you know, I personally married an improver and I think a lot more women are improvers than men. And as an improver, you know, it is almost like your job in life. It's how you love people mm-hmm. is finding ways to improve them. That feels to a lot of other personality types more like, um, just say it, a hate crime, right? <laughs> I wasn't thinking you were going to go that far, but okay, you did. It feels more like just critical. It feels more like an an act of emotional violence um, because we're like, wait a minute. I did. I was talking to one husband one time and he was saying how he picks up the kid right from school and does all the homework with the kid, does dinner with the kid, does bath time with the kid, does bedtime with the kid, does prayers with the kid and the story with the kid and everything by the time the wife gets home and says how everything is done. The kitchen's cleaned up, like dinner's been done, everything's ready. And Who now, is this magic man? And now I can't say it on the, on the <laughs> oh, air. Oh, wow. And now dinner's waiting on the table oh, for his oh, wife. Okay. And the wife comes and notices that there's a pair of underwear on the bathroom floor. And to the husband, it's like, are you flipping kidding me? Right. Are you kidding me? The reason that the clothes are on the floor in the bathroom is because I took care of bath time. Yeah. You know, the reason why that towel is wet and piled up there or whatever is because I took care of all this stuff that needed to be done. And so it's like, you know, but again, if you say, wait a minute, the way my wife loves me is by noticing something that- No, that's unacceptable. I'm no. going to go unacceptable, and I'm an improver. Now, by the theaters, the improver. This film is not yet rated. That is, that's mm-hmm. selfish. It, it is. Okay. It, that can be very selfish because we are, I am an improver. That does not mean I'm, like, don't have to practice any type of self-control anymore. Right, <laughs> that, right. That you don't think about. Yeah, but okay, uh, if saying, you but if you just you. if you just worked a fourteen wow, hour day, this is great. If you just worked a twelve or fourteen hour day, coming home, you you may like your self control may be running a little thin, you know. So again, it's like you're you're dealing with not somebody else who just came out of a vacuum. They came out of a stressful day at work too. So you, you're stressed out from doing whatever had to be done at the house, and sometimes it's the other way around. In fact, the traditional view is the wife. And then the husband comes home from work and he's the one who's like, you know, maybe frustrated that, you know, his dinner's cold and he's like two hours late. 
And it's like, well, you know, usually you're two hours earlier. And so instead of noticing this, you're, you're saying, well, there is something that could make this household a little better. You know, well, there is something that could, you know, make, could bring a little more order or peace here. So I just think it's important to. So in that situation, you're, you think that he, the husband should have just practiced more grace. No, I, not just that. I think that is part of it. But I think that both parties need to understand the other side. So maybe the wife coming home and being like more grateful for the fact that literally everything else in the house is done except for that, then that, yeah. So there's grace on both yeah. parts that need to happen. There was a group of girls um, that I did a study with a couple years ago. I want to say maybe three years ago now. And it was a super old school study. It, I can't, what was that book called, baby, that we did? Martha Peace. It was, she was the author, but I can't remember the name. Of, it was um, The um, Something um. Wife. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I can't even remember what it was called. The right wife, the biblical wife, no. yeah. the godly wife, anyway, the Proverbs the 31 said, wife. No. One of the things we talked about in that group that the girls still bring up to me now is that I told everybody one thing that I was told like years ago in our marriage was bite your tongue until it bleeds. That was the thing that my mom always, always said. It was probably something I did need to hear and still need to hear. <laughs> but it runs through my mind all the time. Bite your stinking tongue until it bleeds. You do not have to say everything. You don't have to say everything. And that is definitely a female weakness, I feel like. I think mm. that there's this like feeling in our minds that if we don't say it, we're not being honest. Or like, yeah. if you really want me to be myself and really be truthful and be open about what I'm really thinking, if you want me to be like in unity, you need to know exactly how I think and feel about everything. So how do you marry that to communication, communication, communication? Because that's the other thing that everyone's hearing. If I don't communicate this, if I if I just bury all of this stuff, right. if I don't talk about it, so where, how do we reconcile the two? Because I am very grateful that you're you have a bloody tongue. Like I'm very grateful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's several things. I think it's okay. Just because you see it right now doesn't mean you have to say it right now. Oh. All right, let's think about possibly another time that I could bring this up where it's like not coming out of my frustration in an immediate situation. When we talk about like you discipline, when you discipline your kids out of anger, it's yeah. literally the exact same thing. It's like the second I feel something, I need to say it right now. See not something, say something. See something, <laughs> say something. That is not, not the case. Like maybe it's the next day when you're like not feeling as frustrated about the whole thing and you've taken five minutes to think of all the things that that other person has done or, or you realize that or in, all the thing in your in or, 24 hours, you realize it wasn't that big of a deal anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Or if it's something that's like a habitual issue and you're feeling a little bit frustrated with it, like Zach. <laughs> 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 Why are you laughing? Like, I feel like the you're going to expose something. I'm going to tell everybody about the wet towels because I have this thing where I use two towels. Two towels. When, when I shower. Because it's like two chains. That's like your rapper name. Yes. Two towels. <laughs> <laughs> because I put my hair in one towel and then I use one towel to dry off with. Mm. And That's so two towels too many. Without fail. Now, I only wash my hair twice a week. But on those days when there are two towels. Hey, don't tell people that's embarrassing. I know. <laughs> that there is, I have this thing where it's like, I don't want to immediately hang the towel up because that means I have to be naked and I'm not going to go put my towel in the bathroom and then leave the bathroom. But you do that. You actually leave the bathroom, the, the towel in the bathroom. You take your underwear into the bathroom. I don't do that. I like to take a while to dry off. Okay, I like I don't, to walk I don't, around. I don't leave I like the to... bathroom naked. No, I bring my <laughs> briefs I into the bathroom. You bring them into the bathroom. Okay. Because you leave your towel in the bathroom. Yeah. Where it's supposed to be always, apparently. Because God forbid we'd be naked in our own home. <laughs> so I like to take my time drying off. I like to walk around, figure out what I'm going to wear. It it takes me longer. And that is one of the ultimate crimes in our house is to Hate crime. then possibly drop your towel somewhere onto the floor. Even if it's only damp. I feel my heart. Um, my my oh heart's my starting gosh. to race right now. My it heart's starting like, to race. It, that is definitely a crime in our house. Yeah. I mean, I think just even last night you were like, who left a wet towel on the floor? <laughs> okay, so. It wasn't me that time. It wasn't on the floor. It was on the banister because then you put pick it up and it's like destroys the finish and it's all white and like you like thumbprinty and disgusting. I, agree. I picked and your sweaty shirt off the banister the other day and it left a sticky spot on the banister. A sweaty shirt's way different than a wet towel. Oh my gosh. I grew up in a house where like you just never did that because why? Because it smells. 
of course get the it carpet does. smell. It's I the mildew it smell. It literally hits it's the floor the... for enough long enough for me to get dressed, and I'm gonna then pick it up. But it is like the second I drop the towel, he <laughs> runs in. <laughs> no matter where you are in the yard, babe, it's I like you know you sense it. No, and it... you like run in and you grab it as fast as you can off the thing and just. All right, hang it up. We're getting, we're getting, we're getting into some real transparency with our listeners here. Oh. It is true oh my God. that my ears are tuned in, and I can be on my tractor with headphones on in the back of the yard, and I hear the sound of the towel drop mm-hmm. up in our bedroom. Mm-hmm. But that's just because I like to be close to my wife when she's oh naked. Oh, my gosh. That's what Cut. it is. I hear that towel Cut drop, that. and I come running. Cut that. Is that why you're like... <laughs> I had to fake it. I had to fake it. Like, I guess I'll come in here. I guess I'll run into the bedroom and pick up this wet towel right next to my wife while she's getting dressed. I'm fully dressed by the time that towel hits the ground. (laughs) Oh, boy can dream. Anyway, uh, you know what? We probably should talk about sex, too. I feel like we we probably should. We don't have time today. Oh yeah, we're too late. We're okay, way too late. sorry. That's just a that's just to wet your whistler and for next week. I have to give week. my my mom a heads up on which week not to listen. <laughs> <laughs> She'll appreciate that. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Okay, so maybe next week we'll Wait, talk oh, about oh, that. I was, the towel story was just to get to the fact that in oh. the really nice way, this was a, a compliment. You might give a little bit of a little dramatic bend when you pick up pick it up sometimes, like a bend and snap. But you've never been like, why don't you ever pick up your wet towels? <laughs> or don't actually, you might have said, don't leave wet towels on the floor. Or sometimes I hang them on the knob and you don't like that either. Well, but, but you, here's why because the knob is literally like one and a half steps away from the actual place that the towel gets hung up. It's the fact that it's in our room still. I don't want to leave the bedroom yet. So that's <clears> null and void. Okay. But you always come and you pick it up Dismissed. for me and you hang it up. You always hang up my wet I towels. Do. I do now. I do. It's like how I serve you. I know. And our marriage. It's for the betterment of our so marriage. So I'm just saying, there are options and our other than like biting somebody's head off or making it a point to say what you don't like about what they do to just fix it. Amen. That's all I was going to say. I love that. That's good. Good words for our listeners. <laughs> That's good news for you out there. <laughs> uh, you, you brother and sister in the Lord. Good news. Um, you know, I think that is a lot for today. I think so so too. I feel like we're probably going to need a part two of this, and I I have some more questions I'd like to ask you. Oh, no. So um, I will, uh, yeah, I'll be making a list of those this week, listeners. I hope you are too. Please write in with your questions for Ashley and oh my gosh. how to make your marriages better. So <laughs> anyway, I love you guys. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you for our marriages. We thank you for just the gift of this covenant. And God, even when it doesn't always feel like a gift, maybe, um, we just recognize that, Lord, that this is by your design, uh, that we live this way and that we walk lives of sacrifice and um, stewardship and commitment, steadfastness, endurance, and yes, self-control. And so, Lord, we just ask for your spirit to help us in this, God, that our marriages would take on a supernatural peace and unity and joy, God, that they would reflect everything that heaven has to offer when we do things the way that you order us to and mandate us to and command us to, God, that it would be done for, uh, Lord, yeah, for your glory and your name. So we love you. We give it all to you. And it's in that wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, our house friends and family, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. This is Nestor. And I'm Willa. This is our house from A to Z. Thanks for coming over. Uh.